spent much time in the toxic people abuse recovery space, you've probably heard of this term, but you might not know exactly what it means. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly what flying monkeys are and give you some of the best ways I have found to deal with them. The term flying monkey comes from the very famous book and movie, The Wizard of Oz. One of the main characters of the film, the wicked witch of the West, has a team of creatures that she controls. At her will, she commands them to go and do her dirty work throughout the land. These creatures are literally flying monkeys. When it comes to toxic people, flying monkeys refer to folks who will abuse others on behalf of the toxic person. These are individuals who the toxic person controls and typically sees no problem in causing harm to others so that the toxic person doesn't have to do it all themselves. Typically, flying monkeys are so immersed in the world of lies of the toxic person that they do not themselves believe that this person is toxic. Quite obnoxiously, Flying monkeys will often take themselves to be doing something noble when they are in fact being abusive. The phenomenon of flying monkeys is most common with a particular type of toxic person, those who have narcissistic personality disorder. These folks will pull on a variety of sources to find their team of flying monkeys. These include the toxic person's friends and colleagues, the friends and colleagues of the target of the toxic person's abuse. In these cases, the toxic person works to manipulate these individuals into siding with the toxic person. Another place that the toxic person might turn to are these authoritative or institutional structures. Right, so that might be the legal system, that might be the school system. Toxic people will go in and try to recruit these aspects of our societal structures in order to continue the abuse of the target person. A good example of this is the toxic person that convinces a police officer, or maybe even just the court system, that they are in fact the victim of the abuse. Right, so the toxic person will twist it all around and say, actually, I'm the one that's being abused. Right? And that's how they'll leverage the court system or in one instance, maybe a police officer against the victim, the real victim of the toxic person's abuse. There is a long list of terrible activities that flying monkeys sometimes engage in on behalf of the toxic person. For example, they might gather and report on information that was never intended to reach the toxic person. Another common one is spreading lies crafted by the toxic person designed to make the victim of this abuse look bad in various ways. For me, one of the most difficult things that flying monkeys frequently do is going to great lengths to make it seem as though the toxic person is actually the victim in all of this. This is frustrating for many reasons, but I hate it because it paints the victim of such abuse as the perpetrator of the abuse. This is one of the most morally reprehensible things flying monkeys do, since they typically have sufficient information in front of them that they could figure this out for themselves they could figure out that they're just lying, but they choose not to. Okay, so now that we have a decent sense of who flying monkeys are, let's talk about some ways to deal with them. Flying monkeys are most effective at getting us to cause ourselves more harm when we are already feeling a bit shaky about our boundaries with a toxic person. In my experience, the flying monkeys are one of the first tools toxic people will turn to when the victims of their abuse begin really following through on establishing and enforcing their boundaries. 
All of the BS the flying monkeys dish out are supposed to, in one way or another, communicate that our lives will be worse if we continue to maintain these boundaries than if we just gave in to the will of toxic people. Obviously, if we've already put in the effort to establish these boundaries, then we are committed to the idea that these boundaries are necessary and will overall improve our lives in the long run. So how do we figure out how to prevent these flying monkeys from disturbing our boundary goals with toxic people? I think the most effective way to be undisturbed by flying monkeys is to increase your confidence in your boundaries and ultimately make peace with them. If you understand your boundaries as a life-giving structure that is absolutely necessary for you to live the kind of life that you deserve, then these attacks from the flying monkeys will not cause you to feel as much doubt. If you're truly at peace with needing those boundaries in your life, there isn't anything that any human being can do to make you doubt whether these boundaries are needed or are the right thing to do. You might be saying, okay, but how do I get more confident and find this peace? Well, starting in June, I'm gonna be launching a six week coaching program designed to help you do both of those things. In this course, I'll help you to integrate your boundaries into your core values through an easy five step process. In doing this, you will come to see just how absolutely vital these boundaries are in your life. When you understand that you cannot be the person that you want to be without these boundaries, it becomes much easier to shake off the nonsense that flying monkeys are dishing out. Once we've let go of the idea that these boundaries are in any way optional, we will then explore how many of the problems that experiences like interacting with flying monkeys brings up really just boils down to exploring a conflict with our core values. For example, flying monkeys might put pressure on you to be a good daughter and argue that all good daughters regularly talk with their mothers. If you wanna be a good daughter, then this situation looks like your no contact boundary is preventing you from actually being a good daughter. I will give you a handcrafted system for resolving these apparent value conflicts and ensure that no one can try to use the things you care about against you and your pursuit of living the life that you deserve. This coaching program involves both online instruction as well as six one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with me, Dr. Louise Williams. The course starts on June 21st. So if you're interested, check out the link below and sign up for all the latest updates. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And thanks so much for spending some time with me today and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.